Tonight, uh, Rob's Roll. not here. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Roll call. Board member Bernstein? Here. Board member Hingley? Here. Board member Malloy? Here. Board member Storms? Here. Supervisor Stanley? There you go. All right. Uh, Rob's not here tonight, so I'll be running the meeting here. This is my first one, so bear with me if I don't have any answers for you. We have the board here, I'm sure, you know, we'll get everything, so. All right, so did everybody get a chance to read the previous town board meeting? Yes. The minutes from the board meeting. Make a motion to accept the minutes as read. Second. All in favor? <coughs> Supervisor's financial report. If I can find it. Supervisor's report for April 2014. Interest and penalties, $5,000. Ambulance fees, $4,013.46. Phoenicia Water District interest, $1.05. Phoenicia Library rent, $300. Justice fees, $7,942.50. Planning fees, $200. Building permit fees, $460. Town clerk fees, $61.66. Dog licenses, $136. Police fees, $15. Highway interest, $32.09. Fuel reimbursement, $32,794.80. Mariner's cell tower, $945.07. Register, $10. Zoning permits, $250 for a grand total of $52,161.63. We move on to communications. And I think, what is it, Auntie Ora? <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Ora budget. Do you have a microphone? My name is Phyllis McGill. I'm the superintendent of schools at Aniora. And to my left, I have Victoria McLaren, who's the assistant superintendent for our business. To my right, we have um, two trustees, Tony Fletcher, who is the vice president of the Board of Education, and Anne Phil Cutting, who's the president of the Board of Education. So thank you for having us. Uh, you should have two handouts. I have some extras up there. And this is about the public vote, and there's going to be three items on the public vote for this year. The first thing is going to be the budget, and we'll talk about the budget. The, um, this is the proposed budget for 2014-15. The second item is the capital reserve project proposition. And the third item is the Board of Education trustee election. And all of the the three items will be on the ballot on May 20th from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. at all four elementary schools, including the West Hurley School. So there's several things, um, budget highlights that we'd like to share that we're excited about. This is the third consecutive year of 0% increase on the tax levy. This budget preserves class sizes, educational offerings, and student services. We've been very careful in scrubbing the budget, and that's how we've been able to, um, re to manage the budget and to move it forward this way. Within the budget, there's $1 million in projects that are being proposed in the operating budgets, and these are smaller items that are bundled together, and that's not part of the capital reserve project or an energy performance contract that we are working on. Also, as part of this contract, um, there'll be a, um, within the budget, there will be the transportation costs for next year. If the budget passes, we have a five-year contract with our transportation company, so if the budget passes, the contract then is approved for five years. We put the transportation contract out to bid, and it came back that after um, looking at existing runs this year and our plans for next year, 
we actually are third, approximately $30,000 less in transportation costs as opposed to this year's contract. Okay, so in terms of staffing, we're pleased to report that except for physical education, and I'll explain that more, that, uh, that basically we are continuing all of the offerings. Actually, we're continuing the physical education offerings too. We just have a slight reduction in staff there. At the middle school, we're adding accelerated studio art, which means eighth graders who take this course can get credit for ninth grade or really part of their high school transcript. Before, we used to have a survey of foreign language in seventh grade, and right now we offer French and Spanish. And instead, what we're doing is we're actually having the students select their language as they exit Bennett and enter the intermediate school, enter the middle school, so that when they take their foreign language in seventh grade and in eighth grade, together it will equal one year of foreign language. And according to regulations for graduation, students need to have at least one year of foreign language plus a three uh, credit sequence. And foreign language can count towards that, or so can career tech or some other um, serious sequence of three courses, but they still have to have the one year. So at least they have that under their belt when they'll get into the high school, freeing up their schedules. We're adding computer science to the high school uh, electives, CPR first aid, cultural anthropology, philosophy, and robotics. So we continue to expand our offerings for our students. Uh, basically, we're looking at the same staffing configuration. We're not looking to, um, to cut any positions or reduce programs to our students. And there is a primary school planning committee that is looking at both Phoenicia and the Woodstock School to say, how do we make these schools truly primary schools other than just not having fourth, fifth, and sixth grade there? And some of that will come out in terms of class size recommendations, social emotional supports for kids, and we're also trying to get ready for adding additional options for pre-K should a grant come available from the state. Uh, in terms of physical education, we have uh, Deb Cease is retiring from the district. A lot of people have had Deb Cease, Deb Cease as a teacher, and uh, we are replacing her with a point four phys ed teacher. So we're trying not to refill the position altogether. Uh, we have a retirement in music. David Lax is retiring after 29 years with the district, and we are replacing his position. We did. When we reduced, when we reconfigured and we were able to cut music faculty, uh, Karen McKenna went to 0 0.6 from a 1.0 position. So she's on a preferred eligibility list. So we will be offering her the 1.0 and then we will be filling the 0 0.6. Excuse me, Phyllis, could you uh, explain that 0.40 at PE or 1.0 at PE? Sure. Um, 1.0 means a full time load. So it's a full time teacher. What we do sometimes is we have part-time teachers. So a point four teacher is four-tenths of the load. So teachers in physical education uh, usually offer um, six classes a day, five times a week, so 30. So if we take the 30 and we divide it out, that basically we're looking at someone to cover um, six, I'm doing the math here, 12 sections, okay? instead of the 30. I hope my math is right, okay. Um, we are also, uh, we've had an administrator this past year who has uh, been helping us with the APPR and doing observations and also assisting our Director of Pupil Services, Cindy Bishop. And Cindy, as Pupil Services, does Committee on Special Ed, Committee on Preschool Special Ed, 504, Response to Intervention, so she has a lot of responsibilities. And uh, we've been looking at how could we do this, the PPS properly without having this administrator. And it turns out she really does need the support of someone else to help her with the meetings and help her with her department. So we've taken this 1.0 12-month position and we reduced it to a 10-month full-time administrative position. And that's going to be funded out of a grant instead of out of the general fund budget. 
Can I have your staff sit down? There's no reason for you guys to be standing up. <laughs> what? Office. Please sit down. Can I have your staff sit down? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, um, let's see. We also, we've had reductions. We're at the point now that we have our last of our cohorts graduating from high school where we have consecutive years of students of like 126 students to a grade. Right now we average 100, but we range anywhere between 85 and 126 in our current first grade. So we kind of vary quite a bit from year to year, but on average we have 100 children per grade. Now at the high school we have this last group of 126 students I think graduating. Last year it was 136, but we no longer have those large groups in a row. So what's happened is the guidance counselors' caseloads over the past, over quite a while, but certainly since I've been in the district about three and a half years, we've had 100 less students at the high school. So what we're going to do is because the guidance piece really um, does a lot of the test coordination and a lot of looking at what students' needs are and can help with planning, for academic intervention support and making sure that students are assigned for supports. We are recommending, I'm recommending that we move one of the guidance counselors down to Bennett to support that principal since now he has all of the students in grades four, five, and six and they all take the New York State assessments. Also, if the guidance counselor, with part of um, his or her time, uh, what will happen is they can provide discretionary counseling so that's counseling when it's not part of a student's individualized education plan. So we still have a social worker and a psychologist, but the guidance counselor can help with that, but also will be to make sure that they're, that we're planning around students to give them the right supports that they need. And uh, the last two points on our staffing is that uh, we have English, we offer English as a second language for student uh, services for students whose primary language that's spoken at home is not English and they test so that they still need support. We, we have Robin Oswald at Phoenicia who provides ESL. She's there full time. We have a teacher of the deaf who's also certified in English as a second language. So she's been filling in about 40% of her caseload with ESL. And then we've been bringing in someone from BOCES for approximately, it ranges from 0.6 to 0.8 to maybe 0.9, but until very recently it's been at 0.6. So rather than going through the BOCES and purchasing our services that way and having to share someone, uh, because that really boxes us in in our schedule because that person then usually travels to another school in another district, what we're going to do is bring that service within our own district as point six. So we're basically moving it from BOCES into our own into uh, our own codes as opposed to purchasing the services from BOCES. And then last year, what we did is we started offering an academic intervention support summer program for students who just completed grades K through grades seven. And these were children who needed remedial reading or remedial math and basically still had some weaknesses and they were not performing at grade level. So what we did last summer is we did what was called really a booster shot of a summer program. So anyone who received remedial support or if the teacher recommended them based on weakness or we had one child who moved in over the summer and we saw that they were weak, we had a half day summer program for three weeks in the middle of the summer, so starting around July 22nd, to like August 9th, we had a half day program to make sure that children were still ex being exposed and supported in English and English language arts and in math so that they wouldn't regress over the summer. So we're going to be offering that program again for this coming um, summer. Okay, and I'm gonna let Victoria take uh, in the budget in this coming year, we have a million dollars in the transfer to capital line. You may or may not recall that last year we had a million one hundred eighty thousand in the transfer to capital line. So the projects that we're looking to accomplish through our general budget 
with this line uh, include repairs to the track, which uh, the track surface has been very, um, I want to say denigrated. It, it's really worn down and cracked uh, to the point where officials have actually told us that we may not be able to hold um, sanctioned meets at our district if we don't uh, address the state of the track. Um, we have money to repair the parking lot in Phoenicia. That building, the parking lot in the winter, there's a lot of ponding and freezing. It's very dangerous. People have slipped and fallen in that parking lot. Um, we've allocated funds to update the playgrounds at both Woodstock and Phoenicia. And we have money to address uh, safety and security issues related to our interior doors throughout the district. And there are doors also addressed in the capital project that's using the capital reserve, but these are these doors are specifically doors to um, the gymnasium, cafeteria, where when we have a lockdown, there are students often in those common spaces, and the doors are so old and have been um, repaired, or a lot of times if it's a double door, there's a center post in the middle that has long since been um, removed or broken or bent, and so those are no longer able to be secured. So in the event of a lockdown, um, you know, some incident happening in the building, the teacher and the students that are in those areas need to be able to secure those doors. So that, that's what these specific monies are for. Um, and as Dr. McGill said, this money is not uh, anything that's going to deal with the Capital Reserve Project proposition. That's a separate proposition on the ballot. And we're also looking at an energy performance contract. So these smaller projects are not part of that. On the next page uh, is a detail of a projection, five-year projection of the transportation contract. Um, if the budget is approved, this contract will be awarded for five years. And it is not a separate proposition. So we need to be very transparent with everyone that this is the entire cost as we can see it now. This projection is done based on the existing runs that are uh, in the district right now. The only thing that varies, everybody should know, we have a very flexible contract, which is to the benefit of the district and the taxpayers. So if we actually have students move out of the district or graduate out in the next few years and we can eliminate runs, then we don't have to pay for them. If we tell the contractor we no longer need um, one run, two runs, five runs, we won't pay for those. We also have flexibility of if families move in, if there's a new road, a new development, we can create runs, and we already have the pricing for the runs um, because our runs are done on an hourly basis and not necessarily how many miles they travel. So as Dr. McGill uh, mentioned before, there's actually a uh, slight savings from our current year to next year, so that was a very positive outcome of our bid. And we did have three bidders, so we had some competition. On the next page, you'll see um, we are required to promote the budget and to explain the three different components of our budget, and those are the administrative component, the program component, and the capital component. Uh, the most important component in our budget is the program component, because that centers around the students. Uh, you will notice that the capital component is um, almost $6 million, and just to note, when we stop funding projects through the budget, that will drop. Last year, there was the um, million 180 in that line, and in this budget, there is a million. But it's a uh, nice visual on the next page. You can actually see on um, pie chart, 80% uh, of our budget goes directly to the program, and that's how you want a school budget to be here. <coughs> our administrative component is a little over 8.5%, and the capital right now is a little over 11%. So I think you know the capital will in future years become a smaller proportion because we won't necessarily be doing those projects through the general fund. On the next page, you can see our current year budget is 51,609,440, 51 million. Our proposed budget for the 14-15 year would be 51,876,125. So doing just simple math, that's an increase of $266,685, or just over a half a percent. Um, and again, we're being very transparent. Included within the budget is the five-year transportation contract. Um, but I wanted to point out and be very clear with everyone that doing 
simple math, the budget increase is 266,000, but we've been um, trying to get projects done throughout the district, and last year we had the 1.18 million in the budget, and this year we only have a million. So that's actually a reduction in one line item of 180,000, and that line item is not part of our, um, the operations of the district. That's dedicated specifically to capital projects. So that reduction is, is kind of offsetting other <coughs> increases in the budget. So our operating budget really is increasing by 446,000, and we just want to keep that in mind. Um, you know, in the future years, if we don't include that million at all, the budget will decrease, but the actual operating expenses, the things that we do day to day, are still increasing. Obviously, our salaries, our benefits are still going up. So I just want to be very clear with that. Um, the positive note for the taxpayers would be that we are continuing to offer a 0% levy increase. Um, we are using $3,475,438 to offset our levy from our fund balance. And um, you may recall that historically we generally use two million. We also have a million in there because what we're doing with those capital projects is we're funding them as we're putting it in the operating budget. So um, there's that million, and then the additional 475,000 we needed to add to compensate for those other budget increases. So those are the things we're going to have to keep in mind in future years. So the capital reserve proposition, <coughs> we are asking the voters to authorize the use of the $5 million that's currently in the capital reserve that was um, approved by the voters in May of 2011. We were authorized to create the reserve and fund it to a maximum of $5 million. So now that we're at that $5 million, we'd like to utilize it. We have crafted a capital project that will accomplish $7 million worth of work. When we originally crafted it, there's a um, method of using state aid to leverage the amount of money you have. And so our state aid ratio is 31%. So our financial advisors um, explained to us how you can then actually do a project for $7 million if you start with five, because your state aid will then come back over the course of 15 years, and you would normally have to borrow that extra two million and as the aid payments came in, you would pay off your debt. Um, but as we moved further through the budget season, we realized we could accomplish this in a um, better way, and we are taking, we are proposing to take $2 million from our unappropriated fund balance instead of borrowing that $2 million. So that will allow us to continue to get that state aid in the future as a revenue stream because the state is still going to aid us on this project and it also saves us the costs of borrowing. Um, we have been informed that it would cost $500,000 in interest payments to borrow $2 million. So it, it just seemed more viable to use our money and save that interest payment and still get the revenue as we move in the future. So I know you have the um, the handout as well about the capital project that has questions and answers. The scope of work is on our next um, page of our presentation. You can see that the vast majority of the work is at the middle high school. Um, we're going to have some new boilers. We're converting our steam system to hot water, addressing some um, asphalt and curb issues, providing some additional accessible parking spaces. We have very few handicapped accessible spaces. There's going to be some ceiling work, including uh, asbestos abatement, some renovations of our toilet rooms, which are um, old and in uh, not the best state, uh, replacing some interior corridor doors, so not, not the doors to those gymnasiums and cafeterias, but in the corridors, and reconstructing the plumbing drainage. So that's 88% of the work that's uh, proposed to being done. There will also be a new boiler in Phoenicia. It's actually a dual system, so we will have uh, one traditional fuel oil boiler and one biomass pellet boiler. The state requires uh, that dual capacity, uh, but and in terms of the percentage of the project, that's 9% of the project, uh, and the bus garage is also slated to get a new roof.
So, in summary, we've been, you can tell the difference in our height, but, uh, in, in summary, um, we've been working really hard. Facilities Committee had been working on this way before I came to the district. And uh, we probably have about $15 million worth of work, but we're chunking it out, and this is from the five-year assessment that we were required to do from the state. So, the capital reserve proposition is the second item on the ballot. So the first thing is the budget, then the proposition. Um, we're, we're very understanding of the local taxpayers. We know that there's been cuts in state aid, and we know that basically the budget, you know, $40 million is 80% uh, of the budget. So the state aid continues to decrease. And, uh, and we're trying to be very thoughtful and careful and, and a lot of work and planning has been done. Victoria is the co-chair of the Facilities Committee and one of our trustees, Trustee Kernick, has is also a co-chair and they've been working on this for a very long time and working with architects and also uh, working with uh, different funding mechanisms and with our attorneys to make sure that we do this in the best way and also with state act. And then the third item on the ballot will be the trustee elections. We have three seats open this year. Uh, we have um, the three people uh, on the board whose seats are up will be um, Ann McGillicuddy, who's the president. She's an incumbent, and she's going to run again. And then we have um, Mike McKeon, who will not be able to run again. And he's worked, he's been on the board for five years plus on the board. And Dan Spencer is also up for re-election, will not be running again with six years on the board. So we're going to have some transition. Um, another person that is running for board is Gideon Moore. And so he has submitted a petition. So Ann and Gideon 